no other god who lives and never never dies there is no other god there is no other god there is no other god who lives and never never dies there is no other god who never dies good morning this morning there is no other god that lives and never dies there is no other god you don't carry about it is only the god and the father of our lord jesus christ so once again i say good morning this morning i hope you had a good night rest and you woke up with a bright smile and i would like us to sing that song one more time because it just reminds us of the perfection of the power of the greatness of this God he is the God that no man made it he is not a man made God it's not a God that you carry about or a God that you have to talk to talk for he has the smart he can talk he gave you mouth he gave you eyes so I just want us to sing that song and just bless God before we go on to the work for today there is no other God who lives and never, never dies. There is no other God. There is no other God. There is no other God who lives and never, never dies. There is no other God who never dies. There is no other God. There is no other God. There is no other God who lives and never, never dies. There is no other God who never dies. Father, we thank you for this morning because you are the only God, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You are the one and only true God. You live, you never die. Every other God, no matter the name by which they are called, they are, called, they are false and they are lies. You alone alone king of glory master of the universe creator of the heavens and earth the maker of all things thou lord you alone you are god amen and without much word let's go straight to read our memory verses in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 and we know it all by now by off by heart okay by now, we should know these memory verses without having to open the Bible. You should keep it in your heart. Praise God. Now, let's go straight and read. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, thoughts of welfare and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And do you know what? You've got a future. You've got today. And God is, you have the hope that he will give you tomorrow. You see, God keeps his word. And we're going straight to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, which is our second memory verse. And it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. You don't have to be afraid of anything because God has not given you the spirit of fear. He has given you the spirit of power of love and of a sound mind and those words they just keep me going every day so i just want to encourage you to hold on to these two memories verses they keep you going and they help you to remember every word that we speak about so today the lord will have me read from the book of john chapter one <laughs> you know we started our journey i will keep reminding us from do not fear God doesn't want you to live in fear. He doesn't want you to live in terror of anything. God did not make you to be terrorized, neither to be troubled by situations and circumstances. God did not make you or put you on this earth for you to be oppressed and depressed and all the prices. No, God did not make you for that purpose. God made you according to the book of Genesis, and which is true. He made you to dominate, to reign and rule in this life. Ah, 
God made us to reign and rule over the circumstances, over all of his creation. He made it. He gave the earth to man. He gave the earth to you. He gave the earth to me. We are to dominate the earth until man lost his position. But thank God for Jesus that came and restored everything back to us even with a greater and a higher dominion. So we have dominion over every force, over everything. So you do not have to be afraid. Situations come, they are called situations. They have a beginning and they have an end. Don't you ever forget that. Circumstances come, they have a beginning, they have an end. Don't you ever forget that. There is nothing that has a beginning that does not have an end. There is nothing that is made that does not have an expiring date. Even human beings, you and I, we were born so we have a beginning. So we have an end on this act. It's only in Christ Jesus that we are able to live a life eternal in the presence of God, like we have been learning in these last days. So we are going to read today from the book of John chapter 1. We'll read verses 1, 2, and probably 3, and then we'll go to 10 to 13. The Lord wants us to learn something. I probably read everything, okay, from verse 1 to 13. And it says, In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. I love this. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And that same was that was in the beginning was and that was with God was God Himself, the Word. And he says, He was in the beginning with God. What? The Word. All things were made through him, the word. And without him, the word, nothing was made that was made. In him was in him the word was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. Okay, we we'll read on verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Remember, the light was the word that all met through him who the word, the light might believe he was not the light john was not the light but was sent to bear witness of the light verse 9 that was true the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world he was in the world that's the word was in the world in this earth on this earth and the word was made through him but the world did not know him he came to his own and his own did not receive him Verse 12. Now I want to pause before I go to verse 12. Now God began begins to tell us here that right from the foundation, God's word. Remember, if you are you should have read the Bible or heard that in the beginning, in Genesis chapter 1, God spoke words. Like I'm speaking words now. God spoke. God said, Let there be. These are words. Let there be. And these words. These words, the Bible says the word of God was in the beginning and the word was God was with God and the word that God spoke was God. Do you know that you are your word? So if your words are dirty, it shows that you are dirty. Permit me to say, I want to explain. How come the word and the word, it was God. Your word is you. Your word represents you. Your word is an expression of who and what you are. So when you speak, you speak yourself. When you express, you express yourself. So what do you have on your inside? Because when God spoke, God spoke himself. <laughs> when God spoke, God spoke. That is why God cannot go back on his word. Because he does not go back on himself. And that is why his word must accomplish what he sent it to do. So this word was in the beginning. With the word of God, God made the heavens and the earth. God created all the beautiful things that you see. And when the devil messed it up, with, when Adam fell, God has to send the word in flesh, Jesus Christ. Jesus, the word of God became flesh and dwelt on earth here. But you see, because of the fall, they did not recognize Jesus. That this is the word of God that made their word. That was why Jesus will speak things will happen. That was why Jesus will say that he has authority on earth. Because he is the word, he is the maker of all things. Of course he has authority. 
Now let's read verse 12 because we stop at the place that he came to his own and they did not receive him. And like today, a lot of people are still not receiving Jesus. But I want to plead. You see, I'm pleading with you because a time will come. You will have to plead if you do not receive Jesus. And maybe it just might be too late. So today that I plead with you to stand straight. If you are a child of God, stand straight. Live by the word of God. If you are not a child of God, then give your life to Jesus today. So I want to read verse 12, which is the most important verses 12 and 13 of our reading today. It said, but as many as received him, as many as embraced Jesus, as many as accepted him, he said to them, he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. They were not born. The minute you believe, you accept, you confess Jesus, the minute you embrace Jesus into your life as your Savior, the minute you embrace Jesus as the Word of God revealing flesh, the minute you embrace Jesus and you accept Jesus to be the Lord of your life and you accept that what Jesus did on the cross was for you and that Jesus rose again and is alive, that's for you. The Bible says from that minute you are authorized, you automatically become the child of God. How? Don't ask me. He is God. He does it. And it is true because you will feel the transformation in yourself. Even though your outward may is not changing, you don't become something else physically. But on your inside, which is the real you, there is a transformation. There is a change. And you find yourself living a life that is different. A better life. A life that has respect for life. A life that has the fear of God. A life that does not fear anything except God. A life that does not go under situation or weather. You know, as a child of God, you cannot allow yourself, mind you, I said allow yourself to be oppressed. Don't because you are the child of the most high God. The word of God has made you. The word of God is in you. So don't. That is why I say I oppress every form of oppression in my life. I depress any time depression comes. I make sure depression becomes depressed for coming near me. Ah, what are you doing here? Fear? I frighten fear. Fear cannot come. When it comes, I'm going to frighten it. So I don't fear anything. Fear cannot come to me. Are you getting it? I, you better, I terrify terror. <laughs> when terror comes, I terrify it. Why? Because I am the child of God. I am a child of God. I've been given authority over situations. That doesn't mean that they don't come. But when they come, because I know that I'm a child of God, look at it. He said, but as many as received him, have I received Jesus? Yes. To them, he gave the right to become, the children, become children of God. Therefore, I am a child of God. And if you have received Jesus, you are a child of God. And do you know that your child has the right to everything that you have? The Bible says also that we are heirs of God. I will read that to us tomorrow. That you are a heir of God. And being an heir, you have a right to everything that Jesus has right to. You have authority over the forces of the world. You have a authority over situations. You do not bow down. Jesus never bow down to circumstance. Don't bow down to circumstance. And if you do not have Jesus, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. God loves you so much. He has given Jesus. But you have to become a child of God. God made you so that you become his child. He said to them that believe, to them that embrace, to them them that accept Jesus, to them that accept that Jesus came to the earth to die for them, and Jesus rose up again and is alive and coming back. He said to them, those that believe that Jesus is and was and is truly the Son of the living God. He said to these ones that embrace, confess, they become the children of God. The love of God is free for all. When you accept it by accepting Jesus, you step into the that position of a child of God. We are all created by God, made by God, loved by God. But how many of us are children of God? Are you a child of God? Would you like to be a child of God today? I really want to encourage you, give your life to Jesus. There is no other life. There is no better life. You know, remember we read in the book of 1 John, 
chapter 5. He said, this eternal life, this life is in the Son. He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son has not life. So when you have the Son, you are not afraid. You cannot be terrorized. You do not permit it because it will come. But you will stand and say, hey, this is the house. This is the temple. This is the place of the child of God. Terror out. Problems solved. When situation comes, you don't go oh, your head. No, no, no. You stand up and you say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You say, I am a child of God. I rule and I reign over situation because Jesus did. Every difficulty that came, Jesus handled them. Even when he was tempted to that, oh, you do not pay tax, Jesus provided. He didn't say he won't pay his taxes. He paid his taxes in a miraculous way. There is nothing that Jesus cannot do. You cannot fault Jesus. So when you give your life to Christ, the Bible says when we give our lives to Christ and we live according to his life, we, we cannot be faulted. The reason we are faulted is because we are not living. So I just want to encourage you this morning as we pray right now that you just call Jesus into your life. And if you are born again, maybe you've gone off. I would just encourage you to return to your father. He loves you. He has not stopped loving you. And he has not given up on you. So don't give up on yourself. Amen. Shall we pray? And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you, Daddy. I thank you for every single soul that listens and will listen to this word this morning. Father, I ask that you bless them. Bless your word into their heart in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for as many that abide on their head right now with the hand of the chest and say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Father, I seal that confession with the blood of Jesus. And I pray, Lord, you will keep them until the day of Jesus Christ. Faithful Father, I commit every heart into your hand. Let your word, O oh God, have a place, O oh God, in every heart. And produce seeds of righteousness, of goodness, of peace. In the name of Jesus. Father, this morning, I ask that you bless every single man, every single woman that is watching will watch this video. With your peace, with your goodness, with your faithfulness. Let everyone experience, O oh God, your love in a new dimension and in a higher realm. In the name of Jesus. Father, pour out your peace. Ah, daddy, today is the last day of September. Lord, I pray for peace as we go, Lord, out of September into October. Lord, peace, 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 peace in Jesus' name. I speak peace to your life. I speak peace to your home. I speak peace to your children. I speak peace to your family. I speak peace to your community. Peace to your job. Peace in your life all around in Jesus' mighty name. Peace. Amen. God bless you. Remember that you are a child of the Most High God. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Don't let your heart be shaken. Only maintain the fear of God in your heart. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Follow Jesus every day of your life. And you know what? You are a winner all the time. Because God will not ring the bell until you are standing and standing tall. Remember God loves you so much unconditionally. He loves you so much recklessly. He loves Loves you so much relentlessly and i do love you too so keep on smiling keep on boasting in god keep on standing and trusting god and i will see you tomorrow stay blessed and keep being happy god bless you